Thanks so much for having me here and for attending today. Um, I'm going to take you to kind of tee up this talk into the future. I hope you'll join me by the fireplace. Um, it's going to be a good one. So in the ancient days of early 2023, people like us, we called them designers and front-end engineers, uh, tediously built our user interfaces. They spent hours, days, even months tirelessly working and optimizing these UIs, like websites and applications. The issue was that user interfaces were dead. That is, they weren't adaptive and they weren't personal. That's when CoFrame came around and introduced the first living interfaces, the self-improving, personalized user experiences that we all know and love today. CoFrame was started out by auto-optimizing the copy on websites and apps, otherwise known as generative A-B testing. Soon, CoFrame was optimizing images, user flows, and eventually the entire user experience. Using the under-leveraged but incredible valuable data from the UI to train powerful AI models, CoFrame was able to create a bespoke experience and growth engine for each business. And now CoFrame powers much of today's intelligent internet. Cool. Thanks for bearing with me with it there. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to the present. So some quick background on myself. My name is Josh. Uh, I've co-founded a couple of companies before this. Um, one called Autograph is Unicorn and the other we sold to Tata Group who was in the AI space as well. Um, I've also done a good bit of work in the open source AI ecosystem, creating projects like GPT Migrate um, and did my work uh, in AI at Stanford. Um, some quick story on the business itself. Uh, we started working on CoFrame about seven months ago, did a launch uh, initially on Product Hunt about five months ago, uh, did a large seed round from Kosla Ventures and Nat Friedman two months ago. And as of today, we've gotten uh, over 2,000 inbound signups um, from people like Microsoft, Munze, and Samsung. But you might be wondering, um, what is exa exactly that you do? <laughs> Um, that was a very nice story. Maybe maybe it wasn't so nice. I don't know. Whatever your feedback is, what do you actually do? So to kind of give you some more specificity here, the issue today is that websites aren't intelligent. So teams spend uh, across marketing, design, and engineering spend months working on them. It's all largely educated guesswork about future behavior of customers rather than being driven directly by real-time actual user behavior. And that's kind of how the, the, the kind of way we optimize our UIs. Um, things have changed. As This is why you're all here. Uh, generative AI, I like to think of as an industrial revolution for intelligence. Um, there's this great quote by Jensen Wong, uh, the CEO of NVIDIA. Software is eating the world, but AI is going to eat software. And this has never been more true as it is today. And CoFrame brings this intelligence revolution to your website. So specifically what we did, this is kind of our initial product. Um, with these two lines of code, you drop into a website, and this is an example. Um, drop these in, and over the course of a week, we were able to find uh, a variant of this tagline, the CTA, that generated an over 4% increase in conversion for this particular site. But how exactly did we do it? So there are a couple of principles that we like to um, build towards in this product. The first is intelligence. So a key part of what we're doing is that our models are becoming smarter over time as they observe more and more behavior uh, of your users on your user interfaces like websites. Um, we have very close relationships with OpenAI uh, and are able to use their latest models in production for clients uh, to an extent that's greater than most other companies out there. Uh, we also develop our own fine-tuned and RLA shift AI models uh, for this particular use case for, for clients. Um, this is an example of kind of uh, some of the work that we do. Um, we've set this experiment up as follows. Um, in any particular uh, website, there is an optimal way of expressing that idea to your end consumer audience. That is like a global best way to do so. Um, we obviously don't know that. Obviously, there'd be no need for a, pl a product like this if we did. Uh, in fact, there wouldn't be any need for, uh, for, for marketing at all. Um, and so what we did is we set up this experiment where um, we assigned different scores 
um, to uh, the generations uh, of content that the AI was able to produce. And those scores were determined by hypothetical, um, optimal or ideal variants of, of text or copy um, that uh, the AI did not have advanced knowledge about. And so we were able to assign a score and as it got closer and closer to an optimal variant, um, we gave it a higher and higher score. And so you see over time, over a progression of iterative steps, um, the model is able to get better and better at generating kind of that most highly performant uh, content. The second piece that we lean into is speed. Um, so CoFrame doesn't have the traditional bandwidth limitations that uh, teams in traditional split testing tools do. Um, this is because pieces of content, the variants, are generated near instantly and constantly uh, based on the data that it's getting. Um, new experiments are able to be launched as, as soon as statistical significance is reached. And this can be done in one of two ways. The first is autopilot mode, where basically the model is continuing to generate uh, and put out and try out new variants in your sleep. You don't have to even worry about it. Or if you have requirements around the way that um, your brand puts out content, Maybe you have stakeholding teams that require some approvals over new content that goes out. Um, there's also a co-pilot mode where you can have the ability to ap approve each new variant. Um, and we're currently building more rail systems around monitoring and auditing uh, the autopilot mode as well. Uh, and so an example of how this works, uh, and I'll show you this in, in the platform, uh, is you can kind of see in this particular experiment, this is a screenshot I took uh, from a client um, uh, two days ago. Um, there, there's a variant that's been found. It's a winner. It has a large improvement over the c current uh, control. And at this point, you can kind of like uh, put it on an iPad mode. It will start a new experiment on its own. And then the third piece is data. So we're constantly gathering more and more data about what works and doesn't from c customers from various sources, like SEO terms that give the customers the aha moment when they land on your site and competitor analysis to keep your content at the forefront. This is kind of how current tools work. You have like three, uh, maybe three variants or some variants, and then you stick with the one that wins. And the way that CoFrame works is it's constantly evolving and adapting and improving. So you might be asking, all right, this all sounds awesome, but what about integration and maintenance? Um, these tools are really hard to maintain. Um, well, to that, I mean, uh, you can kind of get, get where I'm going here with these, these quotes. Um, we sort of solve all that because CoFrame takes uh, only the time that it makes takes to make your morning coffee, um, takes only this time to integrate. Um, and so really it's just two lines of code you drop into your site and then you have a dashboard where you can manage uh, manage the, the experiments that are being run. But this is really just the start. We've been talking about copy and CoFrame's larger vision is to go into the entire user interface and create this notion of living user interfaces, um, going beyond copy and into images, layout of UI and design. Our mission at the core is to be a growth engineering co-pilot for you, ultimately. And with that, I want to jump into a demo, show you how it works a little bit. So you can try this out on your own site today. Um, maybe someone has an idea for a site. Um, anyone want to share their company website? Um, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll just use... Uh, which one? H-E-Y-G-E-N dot com. All right, let's do it. Let me just look at the site. H-N com. All right, cool. AI powered video. Sweet. All right, so the first step that CoFrame is going to do is uh, analyze the site and understand what it is actually, what the purpose of it is. And so it's kind of grokking and understanding um, the tone of voice, um, the offering that the site uh, offers so basically it's saying that it's a, it's an AR powered vo video creation offering users the ability to produce studio quality videos with AI generated avatars and voices um, and so as you can see this is pretty much correct um, it also will go and look for important SEO keywords that drive uh, customers to the site um, and so you can you know search uh, AI generated video and these will kind of lead to this. Um, people are looking for make pitch pictures talk. It's an interesting one. Um, so presumably it'd be interesting to incorporate some of this kind of like talking pictures uh, um, ideas into the copy that you that you create. Um, 
And uh, then it will analyze visually the site for different aspects of the UX that it thinks it can improve. Um, like I mentioned, we're starting with text, but we're soon going to be going into structure and layout and images and all this great stuff. And so then finally, it will kind of create recommendations for improving this. And so we'll let this just kind of finish up here. Um, now that it's done this audit, it's, it's identifying different pieces of copy that it thinks it can optimize. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of different ones um, and each have kind of some explanation as to why. I'll zoom in here just to show you. Um, the first one, AI powered video creations at scale. This is the main headline of the landing page, immediately visible to users and it sets the stage for the website's value proposition. Pretty strong, makes sense. You would want to optimize this. Um, get started for free. That's another good one. This call to action is crucial for conversion, prompting users to engage with the service without any financial commitment. So I'm just going to do the top one here. Um, from here, CoFrame is going to be using all these learnings that it's taking in from various aspects of the website, from um, the SEO, from understanding competitors, and creating uh, a starting lineup of variants that it wants to test. And so this one, AI-powered video creation at scale, this is the original. Um, maybe it wants to try out, create videos quickly with AI, no experience needed. And so it kind of emphasizes that sort of like no experience needed, the ease of speed of creating videos, um, which is a major advantage. Maybe it also wants to try out effortlessly craft customizable videos, probably that op operative word being customizable. That's another thing that users might be, might or might not be kind of like interested in as a concept. So that's the general idea of CoFrame. From here, you can save your work and then jump into the platform. Um, I already obviously have an account, so I'm going to log in to my account. Once you're in the platform itself, um, and I have a bunch of pages here, um, this is our page in particular. Um, so it'll show you all the experiments that you currently have running and which ones have winners identified. Uh, if you're on autopilot mode, it'll just keep going and, and testing new, new, new experiments and new variants when, when the winner has been chosen or identified with some statistical confidence. Uh, and so I, I obviously have a bunch running at the same time. This is also another nice thing to have with AI. You can kind of run a lot of things at once uh, where you don't have those limitations when you're dealing with uh, a growth engineering team that has bandwidth uh, limitations on their time. Um, so jumping in here, uh, this particular experiment, what I can see is that um, there's uh, one particular variant that has stood out in terms of uh, conversion rate. Our conversion rate is just kind of like going to the te going to the teaser flow that I just showed you, and so it's a much higher conversion rate than normal, um, but still still valid. Um, so this this clearly kind of is the best performing variant here, and you can see the the, the different statistical the Bayesian um, analysis here of each of these variants. Um, and so at this point, you can kind of, I had this set to copilot mode before this presentation. You can set it to autopilot mode and it'll continue to generate new variants based on these learnings over time that end up getting better and better. Cool. So um, that's kind of a high level overview of the platform. Um, I am going to go ahead and open it up for questions um, uh, at this time. So, so please uh, hit me with your worst. The question overall is um, the kind of relationship between traffic and confidence in some winning variant or basically what, what's the time to value that you're going to see for a product or tool like this. Um, and it really depends on, on the industry. You might have an industry where the signal is very, very weak and your conversion rate is super low and you just have to get a lot of impressions. You might have another industry which is like, um, I don't know, luxury goods where like, or like ver the traffic is very low, but the like conversion rate is really high. It just depends on the industry. Um, what I'd say overall is like what we've seen is at a minimum having like a couple hundred impressions per month, uh, maybe a thousand impressions per month makes the most sense uh, for, for a tool like this. Otherwise, you're just going to be waiting a long time and honestly, customer uh, you know, behaviors change and opinions change so, so quickly. Um, and so it doesn't really make sense to kind of have a system like this unless you have a, a decent amount of traffic, at least a thousand impressions per month, I would say. So you bring up a really good point, which is the kind of like uh, tension between 
wanting to run more experiments and the bandwidth and resources are co- requires requires to actually deploy and manage and set up those experiments. Um, that's actually one of the core value propositions of CoFrame, which is to say that you can set up any number of experiments, any number of variants, and it'll just kind of go. Um, and it's monitored uh, autonomously, managed autonomously. The learnings from each experiment is taken are taken in and used to generate uh, insights and better variants over time. So you don't need this team to actually set up that experiment, take the, take all this time to to, to painstakingly come up with the content for it, to, to deploy it into production. Um, so I kind of see this as like giving smaller companies and mid-sized companies the same ability to run massive amount of experimentation as a large company that has a ton of resources. Um, so the, one, of the, one of the core value propositions of Coveram. It's based on perce- like if, if it's been actually viewed and experienced. Uh, an impression is only counted for an experiment if if uh, if that part of the page has been seen by the user. Otherwise, it doesn't count. So that answers the second part of your question. For the first part, what is statistical significance? Well, we kind of go off the 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 classical Bayesian statistics approach, where it's like a confidence interval, and if you're ninety five percent confident in one variant being the best, then it is statistically significant p-value being 0.05 and and so like yeah that's that's the approach we take other tools um especially older tools will use frequentist statistics and it'll have a set um a set length or duration of the experiment maybe usually it's a week in practice um and you just have to wait that week you can't like peek at the results early you have to kind of like wait for it to run uh the results are theoretically a little bit more sound and rigorous um from this approach but you get to you, you learn way slower um, and you're, you're not able to kind of like look at the results prior. And so we found that, that many customers just want to be able to like get fast insights and, and make that decision and start and continue, continue operating. Cause that, that's how, that's how our system operates as well. You're able to kind of continue generating new variants. Um, and the lower performing ones are removed from the set. Um, and so it, it definitely kind of, uh, in, like it, it definitely sort of caters to our particular product much, much better to have this, um, this statistical significance approach. Yeah, so images are on the roadmap. Uh, Right now we're starting with text. um, And a couple other things that are on the roadmap are like the structure or layout of a website, trying out different sections, different orders of sections, different sizing of things, style, design. Um, So like we're we're gonna eventually kind of get to the entire user interface. uh, but for now, it's just text. Uh, we just kind of wanted to start very direct and uh, and and um, very focused and scoped. So we don't currently have any specific bespoke apps for these CMSs. Um, we've been asked a lot uh, to do one for Shopify, so we'll probably be doing one of those very soon. Um, maybe even WordPress uh, and some other CMSs out there. Um, but it's pretty easy to integrate right now, regardless of what platform you're on. It's two lines of code that you just drop into the head of your website. And so as long as you have access to the development console or, or whatever you're using to modify the, the head tag of your HTML, just drop those two lines in and you're good to go. So the way that this operates is it, um, Basically, it, you identify a piece of a region of text or some some specific piece of text uh, that you want to generate variants around. Um, unfortunately, if it's truly dynamic in the sense that like no two pieces of text are the same, maybe it's like an LLM native app or something like this, um, you're not going to be able to actually run that experiment because it changes per user. Anything that's consistent across multiple users gives you the the foundation to run an experiment to find the optimal version of that thing. So it works well for that particular use case, but if it's like a, um, it's an always look. If it's like some different every time experience, uh, it's not going to work. But very few apps and websites are truly like that. Um, even if the UI is dynamic in a sense, like you have a pop up that comes up on the page and it's a call to action there, you can still uh, use this te- use CoFrame to kind of optimize the the text within that pop up or like within that part of the user flow. <laughs> The beautiful thing about what we're doing is 
data is in no short supply. Um, we're kind of embedded right in the user interface layer. We have the entire DOM. If it's a website, um, we're able to, in fact, generate our own data and then kind of like uh, results or for the eff efficacy of such generations and have that sort of like supervised learning process. Um, and uh, there's no surge of data. Uh, we're, we're generating part of it. We're able to go and source a lot of it as well. Um, and we haven't actually deployed any of our own models yet. We're still using uh, GPT for Turbo uh, for most of our generations, um, but that's coming down the pipeline very soon. Personalization is coming. Um, we haven't actually implemented it yet. Right now, it's just kind of like finding the global best, uh, but personalization of segments uh, and sort of like uh, doing a user-based assignment, uh, assign assignment to a category is coming coming very soon as well. Our current hypothesis on our ICP right now, the people that are using it the most seem to be uh, small to mid-sized e-commerce companies, actually, um, where conversion is a really important part of their business uh, on their website. Um, I'd say that any a secondary ICP, which is also pretty prominent, is any sort of company that's doing like SaaS. They're selling like small to mid-sized companies doing SaaS software um, sales. Um, and kind of just want to drive toward that like interest level for people. Um, uh, but really this this is a, a product that can be used by any one that has a website and has some sort of conversion that they're trying to drive toward with that website. It's a very general uh, product that can be used by anyone. It's just that's where kind of we're seeing a lot of the most, uh, a lot of the usage early days. <music> You saw actually during the presentation, uh, I guess I closed out of it, but there's like 12 experiments or something like that running on CoFrame. Um, it's kind of cool. Most of them have found kind of uh, a winning variant already, um, which is kind of neat. It's, it's, it's nice when you can use your own products every day. It gets this notion of a reward model um, in, in machine learning. Uh, can you tra train a model that can kind of evaluate um, a piece of content and sort of estimate how well it's going to do. And that's kind of at a core what we're trying to do, except for we sort of skip the step of the evaluation explicitly. That's done implicitly in the model based on how we're updating the model's parameters when we continuously learn over time. And so it, it sort of would be with what we're doing, it's, it's, it's sort of an unnecessary step as like what the model is generating is already its best guess about what it thinks will do, do well. Um, the answer is like, yes, you can trade a reward model to do so. And that's how we're actually going to be doing um, the, the RLHF uh, model parameter updates like in the back end. Um, but when you're actually just doing generation, it, it's already generating its best guess about what's going to actually perform well.